OK, I'm joined on the line by Terry Lightfoot, a jazz legend. He's released over 40 records. He's been going 50 years. It's in fact his 50th anniversary this year. And he'll be playing at the Millfield Theatre in Edmonton tomorrow night, in fact, at 8 o'clock with a special magic of Louis Armstrong. Hello, Terry. Hello, Ben. It is uh, your 50th anniversary this year, and I'm really pleased, actually, that I've got you on the phone because I've recently got hold of a copy of It's Trad Dad, the 1960s film. The which, old movie, uh, yeah. It, uh, the terrible storyline was um, overcome by terrible, the excellent, excellent music. <laughs> but there was some very good music, including yourself in the film. How did you, how did it, how did you get into that? It was the early 60s, and, and Trad Jazz was undergoing a boom. Somebody decided to make a film about it, and we were we were asked along with several other bands, um, Chris Barbers and Kenny Balls, etc., to appear in this film. And in fact, the producer or director, as he was at that time, was a man called Dick Lester, who went on to become involved with the Beatles in in their movie career. And it helped uh, launch the trad jazz boon of the time, didn't it? There was a sort of revival of trad jazz at that well, time. Well, certainly did. I mean, I mean the. the, the what, they, what we call traditional jazz was a being which had died out a bit in in in, this, in the United States, where it, origina- it originated, was undergoing a revival in, the, in this country as far back as the late 1940s. It really accelerated in the late 50s and early 60s when uh, the uh, recording companies decided there was a gap to fill. I mean, the Beatles hadn't come along yet. And it, it was not just a musical thing, it was a cultural thing. Ours was the first music where the youngsters of the day could uh, come and and, and, and be away from their you know their parents they had their own music their own mode of uh, dress the old duffel coats and jeans and things and it was uh, the music thrived at that time in um, pubs and clubs and smoky noisy venues i mean it, it wasn't the concert music that it largely is today and of course also in that film is, is kenny ball who was was first of all in your band wasn't he before he went off to form his own group yeah that's that's right kenny was with me for a short time in 1957 i think he'd always wanted to be a band leader i mean i knew this when he was in my band uh, and he was certainly plenty good enough to be so and uh, he left and formed the band which became kenny ball's jazz men and was the one that had terrific commercial success um from that day more or less right through to this. And another person you've worked with is Louis Armstrong. How did you come to work with Louis Armstrong? I first met Louis in uh, 1956 at a concert which he performed at um, London's Festival Hall. It was a one-off charity concert. After the show, Humphrey Littleton arranged a dinner uh, in Louis' honour at a West End of London restaurant. And I was invited along on the basis that I was the youngest professional band leader in the country at that time. And it was wonderful for me because he was, although he was a trumpet player and I'm a clarinet player, he, he was my inspiration really. I remember that during the during the course of the dinner all these big name band leaders were gathered in the restaurant and when Louis entered it was it was like a god coming in, you know, there was t- total mm-hmm. silence and the whole attention switched to this charismatic person. Then there was a jam session and I had the clarinet with me so I was very, very lucky at the tender age of twenty two to uh, play alongside the great man. It must have felt wonderful to play alongside Louis Armstrong. For me, it, it was terrific because here was this guy that, uh, uh, you know, was from New Orleans and played in the red light district in the bordellos and clubs of New Orleans in the early 1900s. And then over the next 10, 20 years was the fellow that really broke through uh, and made a whole new, bigger commercial audience for, for jazz music. Mm. And you played again with him later on as well, didn't you? Yeah, we were very fortunate. It was 1964. Louis came to this country with his uh, wonderful band called the Louis Armstrong All-Stars. My band was asked to tour with him in this country, and we played the first set, you know, in, in each show. And that was another wonderful experience. I mean, it was, it was really quite overwhelming. There is a tavern in the town, in the town, where my true love sits him down. Sits him down. I'm going to hang my heart. Out of weeping willow tree And may all the world go well with thee (laughs) 
Okay, that was from the soundtrack of It's Trad Dad, that's Tavern in the Town, Terry Lightfoot's New Orleans Jasmine, and Terry Lightfoot is my guest here on Wix for Focus this evening. And Terry, you're playing at Edmonton tomorrow night, and you're, it's a sort of a return home for you, because you started your career, didn't you, in the Enfield area? Yeah, I went to school, I went to Enfield Grammar School when I was 11 years of age. I was born in born and bred in Potter's Bar, but I can remember I had to come through on the bus every day to Enfield, and uh, that's where I got into jazz music at the grammar school. A mate of mine was interested in it, and his, his, his father had a collection of old 78s that featured the music of people like uh, Artie Shaw, and Benny Goodman, Fats Waller, Louis Armstrong, etc. And uh, he played some to me one day, and I was immediately hooked. And uh, there was a, a band in the process of being formed at, at the uh, school, a jazz band. I really wanted to be the trumpet player because, of course, Louis Armstrong was my idol. Mm. But the only sort of chair left in the, in the in the band was um, the clarinet chair. So uh, my mother took me out and bought me a, a clarinet. I can remember it vividly. Um, I was 14, and I think she paid £9 for it. So that's that's where it all began. £9 must have been a lot of money back then. It was. Mm. <laughs> when you consider that today, you know, a really good one costs about 2000 That You can see the... Mm-hmm. the relationship. Looking back, uh, Terry, what, what was the highlight of your career? I suppose, to be honest, the highlight of, of, my, of my career, because it came at a time when, you know, I didn't really expect it, was that when I got demobbed from the RAF and I formed the, my first band, we were just playing at jazz clubs, and, mm-hmm. and uh, which were in pubs and halls and things all over the country. And then I had, I was approached to appear at um, a concert for up-and-coming bands at London's Royal Festival Hall. And I was only 21 at the time, and and I suppose in retrospect that that was that was probably certainly the most nerve-wracking. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, of walking out across that huge stage at the at the festival hall to a full house of about 3,000 odd people, because that was the one that kicked it all off. You know, mm. done some uh, played at some wonderful venues and toured the world since then. Mm. But I suppose that has to be the one, you know, because it, 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 it was the key to what followed. So there's no sign of retirement for Terry Lightfoot? No, not, <laughs> not as yet. I mean, the band I've got at the moment is certainly one of the best that I've ever had. Um, in fact, it has in it a drummer called Johnny Richardson, who was actually with me when I came out of the, the, the Air Force and formed the first band. Johnny's been back with me for about the last seven years. A lot of other, you know, very, very well-established and, and uh, legendary traditional jazz musicians. And it's a joy to work with. The audiences love it. And it's something that you don't walk away from. Terry Lightfoot, thank you very much indeed for coming on and speaking to us today. And okay. all the best with your concerts. My pleasure, Ben. Thanks a lot.